Hey, yo, Rossi, Terra, man, why you ain't had no episode last week, man? I was looking for y'all episode. Y'all ain't had no podcast episode. I was looking. I was trying to woke up Thursday morning. I was trying to hear TTRL. I was trying to hear Terra talk, and you listen. But, man, I ain't had no episode. What was going on? All right, see, what had happened was, uh, yeah. So, Terra, what, what had happened? What had happened was we had... What happened? So here's what happened. <laughs> I was like, just yeah, that was the that was the cue to just talk about what happened. Tara talk. <laughs> anyway, I mean, the thing is, we have done so great, and we've been bragging about our consistency. So I knew it had to end someday. Um, we managed to record an episode when we were traveling for work in a hotel room. So I mean, the commitment is definitely there. But this past week, it was just a lot going on, y'all. Yeah, and honestly, I wasn't really tripping about missing it because we gave y'all a little short IGTV video. So we go did. check that out. Um, that technically counts as an episode because y'all got to see our faces again. So um, it's just not on the podcast. Yeah. So technically counts as a vlog episode. So last week was, um, I'm going to say, wedding week, basically. And we took a little trip, a little journey to houston texas which is where h time yes where ryan used to live and where my family is and we did all things wedding we um had Mm -hmm. i yeah i had uh bridal appointments pretty much every day to try on wedding dresses and um got to spend some time with my family uh you know obviously wanted that moment of being able to say yes to the dress and i did you did i said yes to the dress y'all i spent the latter half latter part of that weekend trying not to accidentally see a picture of it yeah people were making it so very difficult yeah we're used to like not going through each other's phones but like just having free reign having, at it, whatever. Yeah, access and i had to keep my phone under wraps because i didn't want him to see the pictures of the dress and I had to show like family members and I was like, uh, and bel- look away, close your so eyes. So Tara's niece is 14 and she kept trying to show me pictures of other stuff to distract me from accidentally seeing the dress. Granted, she had a picture of the dress in her phone. I was like, look, I don't trust you. I need you to stop showing me pictures. Like, I'm not going to show you. I'm like, I don't care. I just, so why I don't, don't you want to see the dress? Cause you're not supposed to like the groom, not supposed to see the bride's dress. Until the day of the wedding. Yeah, but what difference does it make? I mean, we do what we want to do. True. Forget tradition. True, but this is coming from you who was saying you can't see the dress. So, <laughs> I'm just following your rule. I know why. I don't want you to see it. I'm wondering why you don't want to see it. Because you don't want me to. That's why I don't want to see oh, it. Oh, that's cute. I just didn't want you to see it because I really want that first look when I'm like walking down the aisle. I want that moment for you to be like, oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm probably going to cry, so. You're definitely going to cry. Yeah. So, I can't wait for that. Um, And believe it or not, it was almost my mama. It was my mama who almost spoiled it. What do you mean? So, Tara's mom sent a picture to my mom with of Tara, I guess, in the dress. I don't know. I'm assuming. Okay, so I figured it was either you in the dress or the dress. So, my mom. So, we on the couch, right? I'm sitting next to Tara on the couch. My mom's on another couch at like an angle. Or whatever. So my mom saw the picture, got excited, and then showed it to Tara, like, look what I got. And I'm sitting right there. So I kept having a bird box <laughs> yeah, myself. Yeah, you were sitting right beside me. I seriously kept, I haven't seen the movie Bird Box, but I just know about the blindfold. So I kept having to, like, cover my face up and just, like, so I was spending half that, literally most of that night with my eyes covered, trying not to accidentally see anything. I'm glad. One of Tara's aunts was there. So she was showing the pictures. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So I got to go over here. Let me just, and there was a mirror behind where she was standing. I was like, okay, let me get out of this room. Cause there's mirrors yes. on the wall. And my vision, my vision is really, really good. I'm not bragging. I'm just like, my vision is excellent. So I can read things like half a mile away that Tara can't even see. Yeah. So I just had to leave. I was like, let me just go. I'm glad no one ruined the surprise. Like literally, right after i said yes to the dress and we're all like 
so excited and all and crying and my mom goes okay let me text this picture to ryan i was like no 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 and she was like i'm just kidding i was like hey i don't know i don't trust you so yeah it, it was pretty cool um so my godmother came down all the way from san antonio and got to have that moment and see me try on dresses and which i thought was really cool and really special because she has boys so you know she's not really gonna get to have that you know, daughter moment. So I'm glad she got to do that with me. And um, who else? I got to just, I got to see a lot of family, got to see some of my cousins and play with them and spend time with my niece and my sister, my mom. Like literally the first night we got there, we just were up like a low key, like cheap version of karaoke. We were just like pulling up YouTube songs on our phone and just singing me, my mom, my sister and Ryan and just all these throwback old school songs. Um, yeah, it was it was pretty legit. So we had a great time. Honestly, there's nothing like family time. And and at the end of the day, time really flies by when you're spending time with family and, um, you know, you got errands to run and things to do and people to attend to. And so I hope y'all will forgive us. Um, I was kicking it with my LBs most of the week. So, And we went to a bridal expo. And so if you watched the IGTV, you saw that or at least a clip of that. So we got some really great ideas from that expo. Babe, have you ever been to an expo before? Not a wedding expo or a bridal cool. expo. Okay, so that, cool. was, that was an interesting experience. Did uh, you like it? I did, actually. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. I didn't think you were going to like it. I didn't think I would either, honestly. I was just like, let me just go and not be that guy who doesn't come to the, doesn't participate in stuff with his fiance and help plan his own wedding. So I was like, okay, let me just go. I but get it was there. fun. It was. I get there, and I'm looking around. I'm like the only male fiance. Um, yeah, it was like not a lot of guys. Uh, it was only like, so they give you stickers with like either, that'll either say engaged uh, mother of the bride, mother of the groom, father of the bride, father of the groom, stuff like that. Maid of honor. Maid of honor, best man, maid. bride. Yeah. So I was like the only guy with an engaged sticker. And then eventually I saw like another guy, like literally one other guy. Um, everybody else was like bridal parties, like the brides and the bride to be's and the maid of honors and the bridesmaids and mothers and stuff like that. So I was really just there to taste all the cake. Oh, the cake tasting was legit. And Top if you live notch. in Texas, Top shop, notch. Go, go to H E B. H E B for real. And get yourself some brisket. Yes. And I'm cake. So very serious. Not even we ain't talking about the cake right now. We're talking about this brisket. That brisket H-E-B. was everything. So they got barbecue catering that you can get your wedding barbecue catered. Um, and when I say that brisket was some of the absolute best I've and had. I'm the type of person to be like, I'm gonna judge you if you have barbecue at your wedding. I'm just gonna be real. But that brisket made me rethink it. Yeah, like if you if you not having a, cow, a cowboy country, Southern Texas themed wedding, then you don't need barbecue at a wedding. But if that's your thing, I'm just thinking barbecue sauce, it. white dress, not the best combination. Or that too, yeah. But good point. I've been to a wedding where barbecue was catered and it was good. So yeah, yeah, I know a couple of other people who could do a really good job catering a barbecue themed wedding, but I don't know that that's what we want. Point is, the H E B barbecue, the brisket was just like it was just so tender. So chewy. It was, it was amazing. It was heavenly. And then it was like they had some really good cake too. And it was a lot of different vendors with cake yes. samples. So I had like probably 30 cake samples. Um and then we actually went and got food and couldn't finish it because all the samples we had. Like I went back to the H E B thing to get more brisket twice. Then I went back for a napkin and the lady handed me another one. I was like, <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. And it was like some smoked turkey or something in yeah, there. Yeah, that turkey was good Man, too. And the jalapeno it. cornbread. And jalapeno cornbread, yeah. So it was just so good. Perfect. You didn't even need sauce for any mm. of that. I know. So that's that's how you know you got good barbecue if you don't yeah. need sauce. Now, I like sauce, but oh, yeah. you didn't need it. Yeah. Um, also we got a lot of great ideas for our wedding from the expo, which is my main reason for wanting to go was just kind of look and see what other people do. The annoying part about going to a bridal expo in a city that you don't live in and that you're not getting married in is everybody's trying to like get you to use them. It's like all these vendors set up. And I just really was like, we already have our venue. We don't live here. We're not booking with y'all. Like I really just was like, just, Hey, I'm just trying to take pictures to get ideas. And I feel 
feel bad for them because you know they gotta they gotta they were do trying so hard. Well, if you book today, we'll give you the, no, 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 we're not booking nothing today. Um, but yeah, we got to try out a lot of cool photo booths and got to see like cool place settings and get ideas for linens and um, you know all the. I mean, bouquets and just so many cool. I didn't care about any of that. And then I was looking around and I saw a yellow Ferrari next to a two S class Mercedes. I was like, okay, so I'll be over here. Cause you know, if anybody who knows me knows I love cars. So yep. I went and sat in a little Ferrari when I say it was um, lowered with the little air ride suspension, you literally had to fall into it. It was literally on the ground. Of course, when you turn the car on it, you know, elevates itself a little bit, but you know, it's an exotic sports car, so it's going to sit low. Um, and we were talking about, you know, finding a cool car to drive away from the reception in or something like that. But um, I think Terry's leaning more towards the classic, classic line, maybe, because we saw like a, a Phantom Rolls Royce. And um, what year was that? It's like a like a 2000 um, Bentley. That was like one of the first things we saw when we walked in. And it was pretty cool. I just need you to pick a car that I'm going to be able to easily get in and out of with my dress. Yeah, so not the Ferrari. Yeah. So think about that. That's why I'm leaning more towards a classic car. First of all, I think it'd be cool for the photos. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I just, I, I, you can get a cool car, you know, another time. But for this, I want it to be a cool car that's also functional. So a Ferrari won't go is what you're saying? Of course it's gonna be functional i'm just saying um so yeah we had a blast at the wedding expo so i mean it's just like we just honestly i think the best part about going to the wedding expo on top of like me saying yes to the dress is it just rejuvenated the excitement for the wedding. Those of y'all that have been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that like we've had our moments. We're planning this wedding is super stressful and like we low key, um, high key thought about just going to the courthouse and forgetting about all of it. Mm -hmm. But the truth is like we love each other and we want to celebrate that love with our closest friends and family and we want to have that turn up. We want to have that party to really celebrate. So we're excited about the wedding. Not excited about all these little bitty details. I'm gonna be yeah, honest. I'm not excited about paying for a bunch of this. But one thing I learned over this past week is like delegating is a thing that I can do. People can help me. Um and like I'm I'm super excited to just like actually allow our moms and my sister and the bridesmaids and you know people to help out and people so many people want to help but I don't want to like burden them with that but if people are willing to help and I know they're more than capable I'm gonna say thanks um also wedding diet is in full effect um wedding what diet Oh, I thought you said wedding diet is in full effect. Diet, diet. Um, it's not really a diet. I don't like the word diet, but it's a meal plan. I'm eating healthy. I'm paying attention and I'm like making smart choices. And already the devil thought he had me, y'all. He tried it. He tried it. I went to Walmart literally to try to get healthy groceries, you know, so that I can um, stay on top of things and, you know, try to live right. And what do I All see? I do is live right. What did you see? I see the little Debbie trees. Oh, you did. They got. Cr OK, so Tara's weakness <laughs> is those little Debbie Christmas tree snack cakes. And normally they only come around around Thanksgiving and then last until shortly after New Year's. And I can deal with that because that's not a year round temptation. That's just a certain period of time. And it's like, all right, this is my thing. I'm just going to treat myself. And in the past, I would just get myself like one box. But I don't know what Ryan was feeling super nice this year. He got me like 10 boxes. Not <laughs> like 10. every time I ran out, he replaced. Not to, Yeah, it was more like four. Um, but yeah. So and I started I, buying more because then I messed around and ate a couple of them. Too. exactly and yeah when I eat a, and when i eat one or two it's a big deal so yeah. i just went ahead and bought multiple boxes but i'm now, not mad at it yeah i'm not mad at it i'm just saying i thought this is a seasonal thing i'm done with it tell me why they mess around talking about some christmas in july they got christmas trees in a box that says christmas in july i'm so mad at that how dare you little debbie they got me because they know that that 
I wanted it. They were like, okay, we only sell these in November and December. How can we increase our market share? They were like, mm, Christmas in July. It's a shame. And I almost bought them. I really did. But I was like, Tara, willpower, you can do this. Because while we were in Houston, I ate healthy most of the time. Because, y'all, my mom eats super healthy, like annoyingly healthy. And so I just ordered whatever she ordered most of the time. Well, I did have some cheat, some cheat meals. And the main one, I, I mean, I won't even count the cake tasting and food tasting at the Bright Expo as a cheat meal. But I mean, I guess if you want to, you could. But the actual main cheat meal, Turkey Leg Hut. The turkey, the world famous turkey oh, leg hut. Oh my goodness. It was so worth the wait. Let me tell y'all, if you are ever in the Houston area, you need to add this into a part of your life. I already have a work conference in Houston in October, and I already told all my coworkers, oh, we're going to Turkey Leg Hut. So, so I'm going to advise that you get there as early as possible, maybe like 45 minutes before they open, because we got there at what time? It's about 7.30? Yeah. Let's call it well no, it's like it was like seven fifty five. So we got there like seven fifty five, right? We waited in line. Two hours. Over it was about an hour and a half. So by the time we got to the front of the line, they still had to wait for a table big enough to see seven, eight of us. Because we were kind of deep that day. So the thing is, my sister has been before and she said it's certain times of the day where there's no wait. But yeah, they're popular. It was popping. I mean, it literally we waited, and it was worth the wait. I have to say, it was. I texted Jamel and cause I texted Jamel, and Jamel was just like, "Yeah, it's your first time going, right?" And I was like, "Yeah, I know. I figured it was gonna be a long line, but he was like, "Yeah, y'all gonna be waiting a minute, so I'll just meet y'all there." Because he wasn't gonna come at first, but then um, he ended up taking a while anyway. But point is, it was about two hours total waiting. One in the line outside. Line is always wrapped around the building. Um, so you literally waiting in the street, basically. And uh, I mean, there's a sidewalk, but you waiting out in front of the building and the line is moving. But it seems like it's not. But it is. So they, uh, you know, summertime. So they got fans. They got um, water. water bottles and coolers. You can just go and grab it. So you're not about to die while you waiting on the turkey leg. Um, so waiting in line and then waiting for the food was about a total of two hours. But when I say it was so well worth the two hour so wait. So we had the. It's about the experience. We had the turkey leg um, crawfish mac and cheese turkey leg. And it's literally just. First of all, the turkey's falling off the bone. Falling. The crawfish was everything. The mac and cheese was everything. I mean, it was it was a very wise choice. Do we have pictures? I think we can post. We can post pictures. We'll post a picture yes. and show you. Um, but anyway, let that let that intro is already way longer than I. It's okay. Intended. Got, it's this gonna be a long episode, y'all? Because we've yeah, been gone. We were gone for a while, so yeah, we gotta make up for a little bit of lost time. So there's a way to do that. Yes. So the point is, we had fun in Houston. We rejuvenated our excitement for the wedding, and we are back. We so, are back. Now so, let's hop right into what's on my timeline. Go for it. So on my timeline. Um, after we left y'all the last episode, we we told y'all about how Ariel is black, and we're super excited for Chloe Bailey from Grownish to take on this role. And I knew that people would be upset, but it like exploded after we recorded that episode. Like so many people were just like showing their racism, like literally. Dear America, your racism is showing. And it was just, honestly, it was just disheartening to me because it was so many just like vile, disgusting posts. And I just, I can't believe that people are serious right now about this, being upset about a fish, a mermaid, a fictional character being portrayed as black instead of white. Same thing happened when uh, Kavanjane Willis or Walls or whatever last name is. I can't remember. Uh, Kav- I think it's Wells. Wells. Someone had up Kavanjane and Jamie Foxx played Annie and everybody was upset about that too. Like, and it was a white girl with red hair. And then it was just like, okay, so basically what you're saying is that a fictional character, fictional character does not have the opportunity to be a black fictional character because you don't want to see her eventually be loved. And the thing is, somebody said, um, you know, remember 20 years ago when Cinderella was black and the prince was Asian and his mom was black and his dad was white and nobody got upset. But the point is, because uh, somebody, I was like, I shared that, but somebody brought up a good point that that was before the internet. This was in the, what, late 90s, early 2000s. And so we, there probably were people upset about that, but we weren't exposed to it because A, we were kids and two, did I just say A and two? 
Yeah, you did. <laughs> a, we were kids, and B, um, we weren't really on the internet like talking about it. We were literally sitting up here playing what pinball and snake. Like I don't even think snake was out at that point. We were playing whatever games on the computer. Uh, what's the one with the bomb? Oh, uh, uh, Minesweeper. Yes, we were still playing Minesweeper, um, and drawing with paint. Like we, you know, we weren't. It just the internet wasn't what it is today. Yeah, we may have had internet, but. It wasn't like this. And we were both wrong. It's convention named Wallace. Like W A L L I S. Sorry. Um, so yeah. So Brandy being Cinderella kind of people let it slide. And it, the weird thing is it's not even that she was black. She was black, Whitney was black, one of the stepsisters was black, but the other one was white. The stepmom was white, then the um prince's dad was white, then Whoopi Goldberg was the prince's mama and she's black, and then he was Asian. It like, none of it made sense, but it was magical. And that version is legit the best version of Cinderella. Like I love it. I didn't know that was her. Are you serious right now? I did not know that. So here's the thing. I just realized that she was in the episode of Blackish, and I didn't realize that that was her. And then Tara, I, like my, my jaw dropped when I realized that was Convention A. Wallace in that episode of Blackish with the red hair. Um, the cousin. Um, the thing is, Tara doesn't ever let me watch the credits. She always goes straight to the next episode. So I had no way of knowing that. I didn't. I mean, I ain't seen her since she was uh, since she was Annie. Okay. I'm just messing with you. I didn't know either. <laughs> I'm going to say, there's no way you knew no, that. No, I didn't know. I knew she looked familiar, but I didn't know what I knew her from. Well, good for her. Yeah. Good um, to see she out here still being great. Back to The Little Mermaid, though. Yeah. Um, also, Jody Benson, who who was the original Little Mermaid, put out her support for Halle Bailey. And so y'all can shut up saying that she's, like, ruined the original. Like, the original is still out there. Y'all can go catch it on VHS, like. Stay mad. Right. Um, also love that Terry Crews nominated himself to play King Triton. <laughs> I could see that. Hey, that'd be perfect. Because here's the thing. I mean, unless they're going to do like Cinderella and just make people whatever. Um, I guess I'm assuming that the dad's going to be black and all her sisters will be black too. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but. Guess who won't get upset if the family is like, um, this is a bunch of different races. Not us. Just yeah. y'all. Yeah. And you know who y'all are. Actually, y'all aren't probably listening to this. I think the, I mean, the beauty of Them. it is the internet exploded with a lot of black versions of white shows and movies, and then also white versions of black shows and movies. And it was hilarious. Yeah. So had I loved all of those memes. And then also all the beautiful, gorgeous fan art. Um, so I just love that where we're celebrating the beauty. So shout out again to Chloe Bailey. Hang in there. I hope you're not really tripping about it because Freeform, which is a subsidiary of Disney, they stood up for her and they had a very long read for all the people who were mad. So um, that's what matters is that ultimately what it said is eat dirt and bite glass. Mm. Sure, that's a great summary. Um, speaking of Disney, so Disney released the new Mulan live action movie preview. And I mean, it looked great. It looked very authentic, but no Mushu, no Cricket, whereas what? Grandma, and it looked like she got a sister now. I just was like so confused. I'm hoping that there's some way they have Mushu, the cricket and grandma in there and they just didn't have it in the the clip that we saw um i also get the feeling that it's going to be a lot more serious than the movie than the um, cartoon version of the movie was um because the cartoon version was a good mix of serious and and funny and that's what mushu was was the you know comic relief so i feel like we need that comic relief in there so eddie murphy what you doing um come back to us just for mulan please um also in other news speaking of um black people taking over previously white roles did you hear that the British actress uh, Lashana Lynch is going to star as 007 in the new Bond movie. No, I have no idea who that is. Let me look it up. I don't know who she is, but shout out to her, Lashana Lynch. Um, I'm also, she's going to be replacing Daniel Craig um, for Bond 25. I'm also not really a huge James Bond fan. 
I don't think I've seen any of the movies. But I'm just excited for her because that's pretty cool. I remember when everyone was getting all up in arms when they thought that Idris Elba was going to be the next Bond. And people were like, you can't do that because he's black. Well, she's black and a woman. So how you like them apples? Yeah, it just says, well, she will play a new 007, but not James Bond. So I guess uh, new agent numbers are being assigned or something. I don't know. I don't know enough about the franchise to really speak on my what only, her role is going to be. My only exposure to any of that was 007 Golden Isle Nintendo 64. And I was terrible at that. So. Um, I just remember there was one movie that Halle Berry was in. Interesting. That's all I remember. I vaguely remember that, but I'm no, I haven't seen it. So. But yeah, shout out to her. Great job. Um, speaking of women being awesome, congrats to women's soccer. Um, love that the crowd chanted equal pay after that win. Um, also something that a lot of people may not realize, um, because people are saying like, oh, Mag- Megan uh, Rapinoe all of a sudden is standing up for this and that. She was actually one of the first ones to kneel with Cap. Yeah. Get your facts straight. So she's been fighting for equal rights and social justice for quite some time. Yeah. Um, and then Procter and Gamble donated five hundred and twenty nine thousand dollars to women's soccer. Come on, PNG. to close that pay gap. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So some good big things are happening. I mean, I've seen a lot of debate on my timeline of people saying, um, you know, reasons why the women's soccer team did not deserve to be paid more. Um, but they went no in. No such thing as didn't deserve. Yeah, they went in. So Valid reasons as to why they coins. weren't is one thing. But you can't say they didn't deserve no. it. No. Yeah. Kill that. Kill that noise. That's straight garbage. Uh, also, I'm not really sure who out of the 37 Democratic nominees is going to get my vote, but right now I'm feeling my girl Kamala Harris and not just because she's an AKA, um, she kind of pulled out a hundred billion dollar black home ownership plan. Hmm. Yes, please. And it's going to, I think it's going to like, be a black home ownership plan. Shut up. I think it's going to like correct redlining and a lot of the racial uh, disparities when it comes to home ownership. And honestly, home ownership really is a big key to wealth and setting you up for a generational wealth and um, future success. And so I'm a fan. I personally can't wait to own a home. Um, so if that, plan benefits us i will be excited about that um when we own a home i'm gonna be like hank hilton had a nicest lawn on the block i know you are and i'm okay with that yeah best buy is gonna become the hardware store so i'm gonna be like i'm gonna take a trip down to the hardware store yes yeah so that's gonna be me when i get older but make sure that hardware store is not home depot because allegedly they um are endorsing trump so So let's stick to lowe's so lowe's it is yes if there's any local ones left by the time we, yeah, I'll go there too. But, you know, yeah, otherwise lows it is. What do you mean if there's any local ones left? Because, you know, like a lot of brick and mortar places are going out of business. Well, not going out of business, but, you know, closing, closing oh. their doors because uh, you can get everything on Amazon now. Gotcha. Um, So Jaden Smith uh, launched a pop-up truck called I Love You, and it's a restaurant for homeless people in L.A. Yeah, I saw that. So why is Jaden Smith doing more than the entire government? Right. Because he also did the whole thing with water for Flint. Yeah. So I I just, it just makes me think about, do you remember several years ago when the kids were young, Will and Jada did this interview on Oprah and everybody was talking crap about their parenting style because they were saying how they allow the kids to, I don't remember so many years ago, but something to the effect of like, they allow them to have a voice and they, you know, give them certain freedoms and things like that. Apparently it's worked out okay. Yeah. seems to be working just fine. Like, I mean, say what you will about, uh, will. (laughs) <laughs> say what you will about Will and Jada um, and their parenting styles but I mean Jaden Smith is doing a really great thing I mean I just I think that's super super cool I always feel like there's so much food waste and yet so much food insecurity we've got to put those two things together and heal that um, and bridge that gap and he can body your favorite rapper so he what? Jaden Smith can body your favorite rapper. 
And I'm talking to people whose favorite rapper is like Kodak Black and Lil Yachty and people. Oh, like I that. was like my favorite rapper. Like your favorite rapper, probably not. But he's nah. he's uh he's on his way up there. Okay. Yeah. So, um, everyone's doing this old face challenge. That's really what's on my timeline right now. So I finally did that today. And I, I did too. I can't. I'm not gonna post that. I was gonna post. It's so creepy. Okay, thank you. I'm glad you said that because I was gonna post ours, and it is very creepy. First of all, if I know what my mom looks like, what all my aunts look like, what both of my grandmothers look like, this is not what I'm gonna look like. I know that I'm gonna look like my grandmother. So no. Do you want to see mine? Mm-hmm. Good God. No. I know. I know, right? Doesn't that make you not want to no. marry me? <laughs> it's so that's, scary. Ew. That's not what I'm going to look like. This this app is not accurate. Mine. Let me see if I can You got to show me yours because yeah. it's only fair now that I've shown you mine. Yeah. That's that's not even what you look like now. I, I know. I see how they did that. It's so creepy. Hang on. So. So, so yeah, I, if you don't know what the app is, what's the name of the app? It's called, it's, it's literally called Face App face app so just go download face app it's free to use it um i think it'll put a watermark on there if you save it and don't pay for it but it's a subscription rather than a uh, like a pay for the app kind of thing i don't mind paying for apps i just don't want all these subscriptions to stuff i'm gonna use once over the course of two weeks no thank you while it's popping and then oh my gosh the bad part is i do kind of look like my grandfather right there that's hilarious yeah we're gonna be a sight to see when we get old yeah so the thing is we're not i mean i obviously have more hair yeah we're not gonna look like either of those but the point is um so this is me at 90 like this is dramatic yeah it is so a lot of my friends have been posting these or showing me them in person and it just kind of exploded out of nowhere where everybody was doing this and some people's look good some people's look creepy some people's like yep that's what you're gonna look like um but the weird thing is, like, literally, literally, right before we walked in here, I just saw this uh, article that said that the um, the uh, I guess old people face thing. I don't even know what you call it. The app, the face recognition. Yeah, that. <laughs> Um, where it is it? I don't know what I did with that article. Anyway, I just saw something that said that it may be a way that Russia is hacking us. They said it about they said that about FaceTime. They yes. said that about Face ID. They said that about uh an emoji, basically everything. So when I actually Here's the thing. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead what you gonna say. When I actually read the article, it was basically saying like, um, when you post pictures on Facebook, they have access. Like anyone has access to any of your photos that you post anywhere. So right, it's too late at this point. Yeah, I mean, so like, remember the app that um, everybody was doing where it turned your it matched your face up with like a famous piece of art. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that same thing. It mentioned that art in the article. Here's too. the thing: if there's a digital picture of you anywhere on the internet, hackers have access to it. So yeah, so I feel like people are just being dramatic. Yeah. Um, and trying to like ruin something that everybody got excited about. And all the extra woke black folks talking about something. So y'all just going to put y'all face on the thing like that? Yeah, I am. You know they watching. And of course, everybody's watching something all the time. This is, there's, that's one, what technology does is connect people. So you got to take the good with the bad. And then two, what do you have to hide? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that was the thing. It was like Russia now owns all your photos. Um, What is Russia going to do with my photos? Right. Like what? what can they do with it? It's a picture of me. Anyway, I I don't get the whole um, security concern because, like I said, when I actually read the article, it basically was saying everything we do on the Internet, anybody could access. So I just thought that was interesting that right when I finally did it, that article popped up and Mm -hmm. said it was like security concern. I was like, really? That's like this. This has been the same thing with Snapchat and Instagram and Twitter. If you you want to go back to MySpace, it was a concern then. So big deal. So that's all I got for what's on my timeline. What you got for obscure news? All right. So obscure news. A an exotic bird. An orange, brightly colored, exotic, exotic looking bird was rescued by a wildlife hospital after people saw him on the side of the highway. Turns out it was just a seagull doused in curry. 
I saw that and I was cracking up because the funny thing is, you know, that type of person that's always like, oh, look at this rare exotic bird. <laughs> like, yeah. And then it's just a regular seagull in Curry. Right. So for me, it was like, it would have been like, hmm, orange bird. Never seen that before. And I was like, remind me to look that up on Google when I get home to figure out what kind of bird I saw today. And I'm going to forget. But of course, people, um, the ornithological people are like, oh my gosh, what kind of bird is this? It's out of its habitat. We should do something. Rescue we should call it. We should rescue it. Turns out it actually didn't need to be rescued. It did. It, was it needed a bath. In, yeah, it was covered in curry. It couldn't um, fly. And it couldn't fly yeah. because all of the curry was clogging up its feathers. Aww. And it was in the United Kingdom, so you know, nowhere here. But um, apparently, um, they said it was covered in vindaloo curry and had a pungent smell, but otherwise was healthy. So, um I think they let the bird go and it went away so yeah i'm glad the bird's okay yeah but i want to know where all that curry came from right that they, they, they said there's like no was he hanging out at a restaurant right in 2016 they said another seagull fell into a vat of chicken tikka masala <laughs> as he tried to enjoy the meal <laughs> but um yeah hopefully they threw out that whole vat that's so but funny. um yeah they don't know how the bird got in the orange curry this time so no explanation for it. Uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. An accused car thief was also carrying a rattlesnake and uranium. What? Where do you even get uranium Where from? do you get uranium? Stewie Griffin can barely get uranium nowadays. Somebody in Oklahoma. Wow. Wow. One in Florida this time. Police in Oklahoma say they found a rattlesnake, a canister of radioactive powdered uranium. And an open bottle of Kentucky Deluxe Whiskey. Of course, they had to mention the whiskey. Of course, it's going to be whiskey because you got a rattlesnake in the car. <laughs> What's a rattlesnake without whiskey? Right. <laughs> traffic, tra- traffic stopped. The, the traffic. I cannot talk. The incident happened on June 26th in Guthrie, Oklahoma. About 30 miles north of Oklahoma City. And, yeah. I'm trying to figure out where they got this uranium from. Oh, apparently you can buy uh, uranium on Amazon. Do not. Do not. I'm not about to buy uranium on Amazon. What am I going to do with some uranium? But apparently you can buy uranium. Let's see if that's really a thing. I watched Get Smart last night. You remember the movie Get Smart? No. So Get Smart was like basically a remake of the old version of get smart but it featured steve carell and Anne hathaway what did you watch it on who netflix okay why i'll tell you later okay (laughs) um uranium oxide apparently you can buy uranium Please don't buy uranium. I have no use for uranium. I'm not going to spend my money on uranium. I know. I'm just saying. I have Now, to these little it. glowing rocks look cool. These marbles. That don't looks buy that cool. either. I don't, that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but that looks fun. But yeah, you can. Don't you bring no uranium in my house. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> anyway, uh, Car Thief also bought uranium. Um, now, this wasn't from Amazon. They don't know how it was obtained. Obtained. But uh, they also found a gun in the console. And a terrarium in the back seat with a pet timber rattlesnake. Who has rattlesnake as a pet and why? I get it. Maybe you want a boa constrictor. I was going to say snake. maybe a boa. Because uh, Graham, Graham had a bunch of boa constrictors back in the day. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah, she had one was like six feet. Not a bite that life. No, that's a weird thing for Graham to have. But anyway. Yes. uh, Yeah. But a rattlesnake? Rattlesnake, bro. Why? Um, they were sus- charged with possession of a stolen vehicle, transporting an open container of liquor, and had a suspended license and driving with a suspended license. So apparently, they didn't charge them for the uh, uranium. I feel like if you snake. have a suspended license, you can't be just driving around with alcohol, uranium, and a snake. Right, I would agree. I would absolutely agree. Like you gotta kind of lay low if your license is suspended. Yeah, um, if you call, if you riding dirty, you have to know how to do it. How to ride dirty? So, um, open bottle of whiskey, uranium, and a stolen car. These are not things you do. So yeah, but that's all I have for uh, obscure news. 
All right. I forgot to look for last week's story because I had an idea for it, but I don't remember where it was. So just two. All righty. So um, now we will hop into Dear Listener Letters. And with that, remember, you can always shoot us an email at askttrl at gmail.com. It's A-S-K-T-T-R-L at gmail.com. We want to hear from you. You can um, create your own fake name if you don't want everybody in your business. Um, You can create a rogue email account if you don't even want us in your business. And um, it's it's free because I have like 19 rogue email addresses. So, um, but shoot us your questions about your uh, life, your love life, your work life, your friendships, uh, whatever it is you got going on. We want to hear from you. We want to help if we can. So our first letter comes from Joe Wilson. And uh, this person said in parentheses, had to use a Gray's name. So thank you. Shout out to you. I'm glad I'm not the only one obsessed with Gray's. I'm not upset that you're obsessed with Gray's. It's just... Can you pick a different show to name people after? I will when I'm done watching Grace. Mm. So, um. Grace ain't going nowhere, though. That's the thing. Because you're going to keep putting out new episodes and then you're going to start over when a new season comes out. I know. I cannot wait for that new season to drop. Anyway, so Joe writes us and says, thanks for doing your podcast. It's the best. Uh I love listening on the way to work. Always great conversation and great truth. I have a relationship drama question. All right. I recently went through a divorce from a partner who became emotionally abusive and unfortunately decided to abandon our family for his drug habit and another woman. My question is, how do I live with the fact that he was allowed to completely leave everything without a single consequence? It seems like he's off living his best life and I'm left here with all the emotional pain and sadness. I know that it won't help to be petty, but it is so difficult to live with the fact that he will never, quote, get his. What are some things I can do to move on and move forward? I don't feel ready to date again. I have tried, but I have so much baggage from this past marriage that I need to work through in therapy. I want to move forward so that I can be in a healthy relationship someday and not bring all of this into a new relationship. Would love to hear your thoughts on healthy ways ways to move on and eventually work towards forgiveness or maybe forgiveness isn't necessary to move on? Question mark. Sincerely, Joe Wilson. Hmm. I'm glad you already mentioned therapy because that was my first answer. I was just going to say, I'm so glad you mentioned therapy because you definitely need to be in therapy. Honestly, at this point, I would say maybe once a week, at least twice a month. Yeah, because like, honestly, therapy won't do a whole lot right away. But what it will do is give you an outlet to say everything that you're feeling, everything that's on your mind. So you can find healthy ways to deal with it. The crazy thing is it's not going to fix your problem. It's not, but but it'll help you get over it. It'll help you cope and help you find ways to move on in healthy ways and not ruin those future relationships. Go ahead. What you going to say? Um, the thing is like sometimes venting to family and friends about it, they get you all riled up and then they probably know the person. So they're going to like make it even we worse. Right they're going to know where he is. They're going to like Let's hype you him. up. What you waiting on? Yes. Next thing you know, you in the back of a car driving with all black on trying to go like key somebody's car and it's not worth it to be petty um the thing is you said that you feel like he's living his best life he's not living his best life he's gonna get his he will get his because what's gonna so here's what happens with people on drugs when they leave when they abandon their families it means they have nothing to lose and what's gonna happen is one day he's gonna run out of money and run out of drugs and then now i hope i'm not wishing this on this person because i would still rather them get better and then you know you know you see them doing better whether you you know they come back to the family or not i'd much rather this person get better however what typically happens and you know a lot of people write movies about stuff like this but we're out of money we're out of drugs and then bad things happen rock bottom the thing is i want them to get better i don't want them to get back with you nah, but you better already. but i want people who are on drugs to get to get healed and get healthy and get whole um but the thing is it's gonna get a lot worse before it gets better this if it true. if it does get better for him, for him. Yeah. um now for you on the other hand in terms of coping mechanisms um healthy ways to move on obviously 
therapy is going to be number one on our list. Um, I need you to find positive distractions. So that might be a game night with friends. It might be happy hour. It might be the gym. Um, Whatever it is that is your happy place, make a list of about at least 20 things that just bring you pure joy. And you need to do those things. And, you know, honestly, that's going to be the thing that's going to help you stay focused, stay grounded. Um, I would strongly recommend meditation, journaling, um, because going to therapy is going to be great, but also journaling is so therapeutic to be able to get all your emotions out and all your thoughts. It's it's magical, like the powers of journaling and meditation, um, yoga, going for a walk. I mean, there's just little things that you can do that sound kind of like corny, but they really do help. You need to find things that give you endorphins. You need to grieve this loss of the marriage and of the future that you thought you had with this person. Because when you are married to someone, you know, just in the time that you were dating and engaged and married, you were planning out a future with that person. They become such a huge part of your life, whether you realize it or not. So now that that's gone and that's over, you're devastated and you have to start over. The good thing is you would rather start over and be healed and whole and healthy yourself than to be like a mad it's he honestly the best thing some people can do for you is leave yeah it's, the sometimes best is better that way the best thing some people can do for you is leave you alone get out of your life because he would have caused you more pain and damage he would have been in your way yes and you need to focus on living your like truly living your best life and whatever that means in terms of your career in terms of your relationships and by relationships i do mean friendships for now i agree with you that you should not date yet you got some time um have it, uh you've never watched 28 days have you it's a Sandra Bullock movie. It's no. an old movie. You got to yeah. watch it. Okay. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, it's about her like going into rehab, actually, ironically. Um, and the, the, one of the funniest parts of the movie is at the end, this guy that was in rehab with her, you know, the whole thing in rehab was like, when can, when can you date? After? I was thinking of going in 28 seconds, but yeah, 28 days. Okay. Yeah. And it's also different from 28 Days Later because that's a diff- like a completely different movie. 28 anyway, Days Later is what I was thinking of. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so the whole thing is like, when can I date um, after getting out of rehab? And the therapist is like, well, first get a plant. If the plant lasts for a year, then get a puppy. If the puppy lasts for two years, then you can date. And so at the very end of the movie, he's like, my plant died. What do I do? I want to date. I just Anyway, it's so funny. Anyway, I said all that. <laughs> to say the point of that story was um you need it takes time basically that's the point of the therapist analogy of like get it get a plant first like start small um i'm not necessarily recommending you get a plant or a puppy but maybe maybe get a plant or a puppy you know you know maybe you need just some other living thing as a companion maybe it's going to be friends or family to support you um but ultimately you have got to focus on you and you know I can't imagine the pain of a divorce I've seen a lot of friends and family members go through divorce so I know it's never easy no matter the situation or the circumstance but just know that this is going to make you so much stronger and you will come out of this it's only it's only going to take time and I don't think you need forgive do you I don't think you need to forgive him what I will say is um whatever religious beliefs or spiritual beliefs you have, I would say pray about it meditate about it, whatever you do and release that from your heart. So I would say, go ahead and forgive him. Whether you see him again or not, you need to mentally and spiritually forgive that person for what they did to you so that you don't carry that anger into the next thing. Yes. That's what I meant. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. Like, yeah. absolutely. So you, don't have to you need to forgive him them. face to face. Yeah. Not face to face, but in your heart, in you know in your journal in he a letter he doesn't deserve to know forgiveness that. is for you not the other person yes because you want to again work towards your total healing you also said abandon our family i'm assuming there's a child or two involved here um another thing i would recommend is you know do some new things with the kids i'm saying kids and just in case there's more than one uh take the kids somewhere teach the kids a different hobby that you can all participate in you know um visit a trampoline park you know uh that's a 
really good full body workout. It's a lot of fun. It will tire you out. Um, and y'all are both sitting there, sit there and be exhausted at all the fun you just had. You won't be thinking about nothing, none of that. You won't be thinking about none of the bad stuff. Um, maybe, you know, do arts and crafts together. It sounds corny, but you know, just be creative together, you know, spend the time with the kids, make sure the kids are, you know, they're going to have questions and they're going to want to know what happened. And, you know, you just take their minds away from it. You know, don't give them the opportunity to think about it and get down. Um, like you said, seemingly, seemingly without consequence and you're left to answer the kids questions and then, you know, pick up all the slack, but you can definitely find ways to distract yourself and the kids. Cause you know, you have to think about the kids as well. Um, you saying arts and crafts made me think of, um, my other recommendation, which would be to find a new hobby. So, um, when I went through my ankle surgery recovery, um, not to compare this to that, but any, you know, it was a bit of depression because, you know, you're immobile and, you know, you're in pain and all of that. So one thing that I did to take my mind off of that pain was, um, calligraphy and adult coloring books and also um my passion planner just like getting a bunch of stickers and markers and like really um decorating it and so whatever it is it may be some you know maybe an adult coloring book that relaxes you um there's an adult coloring book on amazon that has like a bunch of cuss words um that could be therapeutic, you know, maybe you just need to like, just be like FM. Um, but yeah, like just try to find positive distractions that can help you put yourself back together. Cause you are broken right now. You need to heal. Um, you know, but try to do it in a healthy way and just give yourself time. I would agree. So best of luck with, you in that situation um again his consequences don't worry about his consequences he'll have to deal with those um yeah it sucks but you don't need to exact revenge it sounds like the path he's going down the revenge will find him so you just focused on being the best you can be for the kids and make sure that the kids are taken care of and that that's what you work on don't again don't worry about him just keep going and yeah absolutely seek, find a therapist so um best of luck to you joe and write us back if you need anything else yeah we absolutely need to hear a follow-up so yes um our next question is gonna be a little bit lighter note it's a little bit more one of those like this or that um and it's from link and so link says link from zelda link from grace oh or zelda whatever i was gonna say the dog from uh, from from our friends over at crystal and west Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Um. So, which do you prefer when it comes to drinking, straw or no straw? All right. So here's the deal. Ninety nine percent of the time, I'm only drinking out of my Yeti because I'm drinking water ninety nine percent of the time. So I have multiple Yetis in everywhere that I am, and I usually carry one around with me, and I keep a straw in it. Simply because if I'm driving, because I usually take it in the car with me. So if I'm driving, I don't want to put that giant cup in my face while I'm driving and then can't see nothing because I guess the 30 ounce one that I'm carrying around with me. So I'll just keep a straw right there so I can still see the road while I'm driving. Plus, I'm kind of lazy and don't feel like picking the whole thing up and tilting backwards and all of that. I don't know. I'm just kind of lazy. So I'm saying straw. So I've. In terms of like drinking things at home, I formerly would have said no straw, but here lately you got me on the straw game as well. Um, You got me on the put ice in every single drink game. So, and that makes my upper lip cold trying to drink it without a straw. Ice. So, um, so now I, I definitely do straws at home. I also found that I don't know what it is about like the shape of your mouth, or maybe it is like putting the whole thing in your face and then turning it up. But, um, I tend to drink more water when I use a straw. Mm-hmm. And so I'm trying to drink more water, y'all. And it's so crazy. Even I if feel I feel like it's easier somehow. It is. But even if I drink water all day long, I still feel like I'm not getting enough water. So the straw kind of helps with that. Definitely when I'm eating out, I got to have a straw because I don't trust y'all to clean these dishes well enough. I'm not putting my mouth on it. Um, that 5 million other people have put their mouth on. Um, but... 
you know, straws are like plastic straws are bad for the environment. So a lot of people are up in arms about straws. So some people carry like the metal straws around with them. Some people are trying to do the paper disposable straws. But I'm going to be honest, those don't really work. Yeah, the paper ones only work if you can finish the drink immediately. Yeah, like two seconds. I absolutely hate the metal ones. So what I what I'll do is just reuse my plastic one until it's not, you know, gross. Yeah, until it's gross. Then I throw it away and get another one. So I'll use it more than just the one time for the one drink. I thought I was going to hate the metal ones. I'm going to be honest. But um, like one of my coworkers saw me struggling to drink. <laughs> like I, had a t- I was walking and turned the whole cup up mm-hmm. and she was like, you need a straw. And I was like, uh-huh. I thought she was just like making a comment. Literally the next day she had a pack of uh, like a brand new pack of metal straws on my desk. I love people like that. Like, that's so sweet. Um, like, one of my coworkers just, like, borrowed my... I have this diffuser in my office. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of my coworkers borrowed the essential oils that I put in there, like, probably twice. Mm-hmm. Why I came back from vacation and there was a box of essential oils on my desk. Aww. Like, just completely replaced all of them and some. Like, I just love people like that. See, yeah, that's the type of person I want to be that type of person. Because, like, I feel like if people think enough of me to let me use something or let me borrow something, I'm going to return it in better condition. Like, um, if you let me borrow your car, I'm probably going to wash it and put gas in it before I bring you it back. You don't be doing that when you borrow my car. Because I always wash your car and I always put gas in it. Especially before I got my own car. So, yeah. Interesting. My so, car uh, needs gas, real talk, let's talk, tires, and let's, oil change, let's talk for and a to be cleaned out. So, let's you can definitely borrow my car. Let's just switch let's cars right now. Let's talk for a second. Because let's think about the two, the, the, the little gap, the, the gap in which you had a car and I didn't, and we were sharing yours. From the time you got that car in June of 2015 to the time I got mine in May of 2017. No, because I had another car between the Camaro. Um, whenever I got the Mustang, mm-hmm. you know, do you, do you do you realize you did not put gas in that car? I know, and I more miss than twice that. I miss it because I always filled up your tank. I know always. it's like magic. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, nice the point though. is the straws. Um, I'm a fan of a straw. I don't know where I stand on this whole debate. I think I might start just trying to carry a straw around with me because I don't want to ruin the environment even though we kind of already are so i I would like to cut back a little bit i'm looking at amazon there's so many different options for reusable straws now and i love the little straw cleaner yeah you know because that's my whole thing is like uh how you getting in there but uh, they have the straw cleaners too Mm -hmm. so i'm okay with the reusable metal ones i don't like first of all the metal ones are too thin so it's like it's, it's it's too small first of all um and then it's just really freaking cold it is really cold. It uh, is. Yeah, it it feels like winter time on your lip. <laughs> winter <laughs> on your lip. <laughs> yeah, so I'm oh I'm gosh. not a big fan of that. Um, in terms of the environment, I'm definitely gonna either keep being, uh, I guess, keep reusing the plastic one as much as possible, or um, find another alternative because the paper ones are trash. I'm gonna be honest. I kind of want to get the paper ones for our wedding just because they're cute in the different colors. That's what I was about to say. The only time I've ever had a paper straw will. The only time I can remember having a paper straw was at a wedding. And I went to go refill the drink because they just had those, you know, the buffet or whatever. So I just went to go refill my uh, lemonade and second round of drink. And it was like falling apart in my mouth. And I, I was know. like, ew. It's so gross. I don't want to drink But they're paper. so cute. Um, yeah, it was definitely adorable. It was just not practical. I know. Oh, and they're cheap too. A hundred pack of paper drink straws just like these. Exactly. Seven bucks. Buy them right now for the wedding. No. So, um... So thanks for your Ooh, question. Look at these. I know. Oh, that's two hundred of them for seven bucks. Wow, that's a couple of different designs too. I'm so excited. Anyway, so See, this is what we do all day. <laughs> oh, look at these. Look at these. So thank you, Link, for your question. In terms of straw or no, no straw. We're voting straw all day, every day. Not plastic, not paper. Maybe metal. It's like you can put it in a case and then it collapses on itself. And you can. I'm gonna feel so dope if I got a straw case. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna flex on people. Yeah, it kind of looks like a, a vape case. Look at it. it oh like goodness. A... Um. So again, feel free to send us oh, dude, your that no it's a straw case. Send us your questions to ask ttrl at gmail dot com. A s k t t r l at gmail dot com. We want to hear from you. So 
tell us what you got to say. And so we're going to wrap up this episode like we always do with a quick tip in general um, in terms of love life advice. And so those of you who are in a relationship, want to be in a relationship one day or just want to hear what we got to say about relationships. Um, Because side note, yes, I also do write relationship advice articles on the side. What's that website? And the crazy thing is, so I write for this um, site called AfropolitanMom.com. And I haven't written an article in a while because I... um, Started grad school, started this podcast. Yeah, there's just been a lot going on. But if you have articles... If you have article suggestions, I would love it. Um, But here's my advice. Get married at whatever age you decide to get married. Stop encouraging young adults to rush into marriage. Oh, you're 25. Why aren't you married yet? What's wrong with you? I'm talking 18. Cut that that out. I saw um, this post where um, someone was referencing Jimmy Carter and uh, Rosalind Carter, their anniversary, which they've been married for, I think it was like 70, 80 years, something like that. A long time. They're old. And um, good for them. Yes. But it's a different time. And the person that I saw that shared that article was like, yes, you need to keep your kids pure and then tell them to get married at 18. And I was like, er, what? Wait, somebody said that recently? Yes. Remind me to send you these screenshots. Okay. You know this person. Um, oh Lord. And the thing is, don't 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 even don't even show me. It really made me furious because that's like one of my biggest pet peeves is people trying to tell people that they need to hurry up and get married. Um, you know, if you choose to save yourself for marriage, then that is awesome. It's noble. It's a great choice, but. That shouldn't be your reason for rushing into marriage. Because it doesn't always work. I fully believe that people should live life a little bit. I mean, honestly, like, first of all. That doesn't mean go home. No, I'm saying, like, get to know yourself, go to college, have a career, have your own apartment, pay some bills, like, do some stuff on your own. Yes. Feed yourself, do laundry. Like, yes. you need a time You need a time period in between living with your parents or living in a a college dorm or an apartment with roommates and and living with your partner for the rest of your life. You need some time in there where you just have your own spot that you pay your bills, you're taking care of it. And I'm speaking specifically to women. I think this is very, very critical for women. I personally think it's true for men as well. I would agree. But I just know too many women who went straight from their parents' house, house to a dorm to their husband's house. Right. Or straight from their parents' house to their husband's house. And I just, I really, I just am not, I'm not a fan. It may work for some people, but I've seen a lot of people that have done that and then felt miserable, felt robbed of of a life and I just I don't think that rushing people into marriage is a thing I just heard someone the other day say that they got married at 14 and um had kids at 15 now granted this person again is pretty old so that was a different time I mean I didn't even know you were allowed to get married at 14 I don't know what year this was I can't imagine but like yeah my niece is 14 She's not I even was, ready to date. The girl I was dating at 14, if I hadn't married her, no, my Lord. No. I don't, I don't even want to imagine uh-uh, that life. Uh-uh. I, let me tell you, the person I was dating at 14, if I had married him, no, thank you. I, I just can't. I, I, uh, Every relationship, I'm still upset with you for not talking me out of that at 14. You know what? I didn't know you like that. Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, by 14, we had known each other since we were nine. Come on, you knew me. I did, but I didn't want to tell you not to be I with would, her. You were the one person I would have listened to. I just was shaking my head, like, what is he doing? You are the one person yeah. I would have listened to and got myself out of that. The point is, no one should rush into marriage. Um, whether you know don't don't let people rush you into also rushing into it you'll end up with the wrong person absolutely a lot of these people that you see that have been married 70 years 80 years whatever 60 years even 50 that is amazing and some of them are absolutely legitimately happy some of them 
just stuck it out because that's what you do. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I want a long, happy marriage, but you got a chief. I waited for the right person, and I'm just gonna say, like, do not rush into that, and don't pressure young people. Like, I literally heard someone the other day, like, um, one of the college students that I work with, like, just casually mentioning, "Oh, what if he proposed?" And I was like, "No, you're too young." you are too young to get engaged. Like, I just feel like, I feel very strongly about that, that people should live their lives and and travel and explore things and have experiences. And, you know, some people may disagree. Why would, I don't understand why anybody would want to combine their life with another, with another life if they don't have a life. Exactly. Exactly. So that is my uh, soapbox for the week. Um, we thank you hey, all. It's my turn. Oh, I'm sorry. Gosh. Um, only thing I was just gonna say was uh, <laughs> <laughs> I re- I didn't, didn't really have a whole lot, but basically along that same line, yeah, well, we actually kind of touched on it already. Don't rush somebody into a marriage because because of their age. Do like don't be that person's like, oh my gosh, I'm about to turn 28 and I'm not married. What am I gonna do? Oh, do you like me? Hey, let's get married. No, don't do that. Oh, I see what you're saying. So I'm saying don't get married too young. And you're saying don't rush into it because you think you're too old. Yeah. Yeah, that's real too. Because here's the thing. We were dating for six years before I proposed to you. There were times where I was ready to ready to propose. There was times where I was questioning us, me, you, us, the situation, my own insecurities, your insecurities. There's a lot that goes on in a relationship and a relationship is between two people, not you, me, and the entire community and your family, your cousins, your aunts, my family, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, and some people I ain't talked to in like six years, but they just hit me up because they saw we were dating. So these outside forces are not the answer to you and your own, your own feelings. The fact is, when you're dating somebody, you grow and you need to give yourself that time to grow. You're probably going to date more than one person before you get married. If you don't, if you're Corey and Topanga, that's great. But not everybody gets that. That's not going to work for everybody. I found that out the hard way when I was 14. Point is, uh, (laughs) point is, like, you seriously have to make adjustments as you're going along. Because in today's world, it's not as simple as growing up in a hometown and you meet somebody in the fourth grade and y'all graduate you get married as soon as you graduate you buy your parents house and you live in that house for the rest of your life and you work for one company for after you graduate that doesn't happen like that anymore yeah you're going there's to travel more zigzags there's so many more it's like you're gonna work somewhere random when you get out of college you're gonna want a different job you're gonna get relocated you're gonna want to go back to a different city you're gonna want to try chicago when you were born in i don't know somewhere in south carolina you know, I want to go to Chicago. I want to live in L.A. for a while because you, you're you you're going to want to experience life. Life is not a straight line. Life is not a straight line anymore. So it was zigzags. in like the 1800s back when if your dad was a belt maker, you were a belt maker. But that's not the case anymore. A lot of people don't take over the family business when they turn 18. So you're not going to be in the same house your entire life. So live a little, live a little, learn yourself continue to learn yourself as you grow because that's ultimately what happened it's like i was growing terror was growing i wasn't sure who i was becoming i had it to get used to it I had to make sure that this new version of me was compatible with the new version of her preach because i was not going to marry her just because i said i would and it's been a while i'm like okay everybody's like hey what's taking y'all so long y'all said a date shit why are y'all concerned if we get married or not like ultimately what is it going to do for you in your life <laughs> will our marriage cause you to have more money no will our marriage cause you to be more educated no will me making sure that this is the actual right thing to do because i only want to get married one time being cautious will this save me a lot of time money and heartaches Mm. for the both of us Mm -hmm. so yeah that's kind of the route that i took so that means you have to do it when it's right for you you have to do what's right and for you. And not let anyone pressure you either too early or when you think it's too late. Either way, you just have to find your own timing. Everyone's life is different. Everybody's life is different. 
If your life is the same as somebody else's, you're living it wrong. Because it's not going to be the same. No two fingerprints are the same. Your life won't be either. So enjoy your life. Live your life. Be you. And appreciate yourself. Learn to appreciate yourself so that somebody else knows how to appreciate you. You feel me? Because if you don't, if you can't learn to love yourself by yourself, you can't expect somebody else to love you. So, yeah, take that as our quick tip of the week. And with that, again, we want to say thank you so much for listening to us each and every week. We thank you for tuning in. Thank you. And shout out to those of you who missed us last week. Um, we appreciate that to know that. Oh, somebody made us. Somebody. Feel yeah, we feel special. Somebody actually was waiting on this. Oh, OK. Um, so many people were like, man, I woke up looking for y'all episode because I listened to it in the morning. I'm like, oh, but we, we woke up looking for it, too. We did too. <laughs> Honestly, it was like 1145 and we were hanging out with family and we were dog tired at that point and i was like you know what we didn't record the podcast and, and I, it was just like oh crap and as much as i love y'all I don't regret it because family time you can't get that back true um so i definitely had a mic for us to do it but yeah you know, we came prepared, we it, prepared. Just didn't happen. it just didn't happen but thanks for waiting patiently we hope we you enjoyed this that. episode and make sure you are following us at this is ttrl at uh on facebook and twitter and instagram, instagram. and make sure you're following our personal accounts i'm uh, tcar underscore examiner on on all of those things as well i'm the rye c at t-h-e-r-y underscore c and you can listen to this podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure you share it with a friend please share it with a friend check it out um we appreciate it we're trying to do something so yeah help us get popular <laughs> have a great week y'all peace <laughs>